Hello my friends, thank you for joining Matthew's Digital. My name is Aaron and today we have a very interesting topic. We are going to see how to code in a TAFJ environment. So if you have been following our channel, you know that most of the development is done in uh, TAF's environment. But if I look at the trend, most of the new implementations are now done on TAFJ. And most of the upgrades are also being done on TAFJ. So if you are looking to upgrade to the latest release, most likely you are going to do this on a TAFJ environment. And if you have done recent implementation, most likely a TAFJ environment. Now, rest assured, if I've been doing info basic, it's not a waste of time. Okay? InfoBasic is still supported in the latest releases of TAFJ. So I'm going to show you how you can transition from TAFC to TAFJ development, which implies of maintaining your subroutines and programs which are written in InfoBasic or JBC, and you just do a minimum adjustment. You tweak them in a simple way and make them run on a TAFJ environment. Now, if this is a new implementation, of course, it's better you start with TAFJ development right away. Good. Now, there are two ways when it comes to TAFJ development. The first option, as I just said, you maintain InfoBasic because it is well supported in TAFJ. The second, you can also use pure Java development for T24. Now, how to do that? We are not going to discuss that in this video. If you want to learn more on how to do pure Java development for T24, you have two options. Number one, you can become a member of this channel just to purchase membership for less than three euro you get free video on uh, how to code in uh, java now if you want to capitalize if you want to get more of benefits you can check other levels of membership so if you want to join our live sessions drop me an email at info at mathis.io I'm going to share the details in the description on how you can get more benefits. But without becoming a member, you also have benefits of learning T24 on this channel for free. So rest assured the quality is okay and I'm still improving the quality of my videos on this channel. Now. Let's start with the first option because we've been writing InfoBasic. Let's see how we can transition from TAFC to TAFJ development, still maintaining most of our programs written in InfoBasic. For that, we're going to use previously developed our programs and subroutines. So in our last video, I showed you how to process a list and produce a JSON array. So this subroutine produces a JSON object, and this program calls that subroutine to produce the array of data in a JSON format. How do you transition? First of all, we're going to use Design Studio. It's not a must. Again, you can still use any code editor at the end. All you need is a, just a text editor. But let's use the IDE, Design Studio. Design Studio is an adapted version of Eclipse. So if you're a Java developer, you already know uh, Eclipse, which comes with uh, some extra benefits, where, which we're not going to discuss now. Now, here, what you do, once you have a TAFJ project, what you do, you do right-click, you create a component folder structure. The name should start with the product code, we are going to use EB, the core, and we are going to give it a name. 
Let's name this MTD training. Click finish. So if you look at this, this folder is created MTD training. And this file component pops up. So this file actually is located here in the definition. If you open your folder, you click on the component, this is where it is located. So which means once we compile our source code, the system is going to produce a JAL file with this name eb underscore mtd training here is where we're going to have our source code we have private and, and public folders so the first thing we're going to do we're going to define our subroutine in this component file because this is the first component we have and this is the name of our subroutine let's grab it the way it is I paste it here now, one thing you should not do, you should not have a dot in the definition of your component, the name of your method. So, because when you're referring to this subroutine, we are going to say eb.mtd training, which is the package name dot subroutine or the method name. So, now we want this method to be public because we want to call this from uh, other programs or other subroutines so it's a public method with this name now the name can be different it does not have to be the name of a subroutine a matter of fact here i remove dot and i need to give a hint to t24 saying this is the inward parameter and this is the outward parameter and i can also define the data type the data type is a string for this parameter same way for this is also a string now there's one extra thing i need to do now i need to say that this is a jbc program with this name so with this what i'm saying i'm defining this public method with this name with these parameters but this refers to a JPC program or a JPC subroutine with this name. Now, when I save in this IDE, it compiles automatically. So if you look at this, it is compiled successfully. Now, the next thing we need to create this subroutine. So we do this, I can copy. I'm going to create this in this folder, private. I can use the template. When you use the template, it's going to add .b automatically and also get some inserts, the mandatory inserts. Now I'm going to grab the source code for this subroutine the way they are. Or let me get the parameter. Okay. And I also have an extra insert, as inserting account. Let me also add it here. And I get the rest of the source code. Okay. And I can also grab my comments. my comments and I also extend a bit All right now if I compile this program the subroutine is going to raise an error because we need to make this a part of this component remember I have defined this as a part of this component so we need to make to tell the system that is the package name is this one, the one we just created. Now, our subroutine is ready. Uh, the only thing here in, uh, in the tough chair, my, my subroutine here accepts an extra parameter, which is an error. So it has four parameters. 
All right. So our subroutine is compiled. A recap. What have I done? I just added this extra keyword package in the defined package, which we have defined by the way here. So we defined our component. We said we are going to create a component, a JBC component with this name. And it has this parameter. This is the definition. And we created it and we made it part of the same package. Now, if you check our folder, because this is compiled already. So if we check in our jar folder where the com source code are compiled, sure enough, we have our component. Now, let's view our component. The com terminals p24 as you can see we have those two files which means our subroutine was compared to this class and also our component okay so now we can invoke this subroutine it's already created now let's move forward the next thing which we're going to do we're going to create our program let's do that quickly i'm going to grab the name the way it is Go to public new file or new template using the template. Let create it as blank, and I'm going to grab the source code the way there. Now, it is one thing I need to do because the way my the environment is configured, it's not like a tough scene. So if I run this program, it's going to give me an issue. So I need to call load.company in this multi-company environment. It's a multi-company environment. But depending on how your environment is configured, you might not do that. I talked about this uh, last time. So let me do that quickly. I can do, if, I can check if this company code if it is different from uh, the id.company, then I need to call the subroutine, which is called load.company. Sorry, load.company. And I give it this company code. So I talked about this uh, in your previous video. And this is because of the way my environment is configured. Now, this ID of the company is defined in I common, so which means I need to insert I common. That's all. So our program is ready. Let me also concatenate with just a string. Our program is ready. The only thing we have done, we took it the way it is. This program runs, can also run in tough the way it is. And it's going to run in a tough as well. So let's see. So it's not a must. The program does not have to be part of our jar. So because this is just for testing purpose. The most important thing which I want to keep here is this subroutine, but this is a testing program. So I don't want to have this as a part of my jar. If I want to make it part of my jar, the only thing I need to do is to say, okay, package, and I put the name of our package but I don't want to have this as a part of my jar okay now I'm telling you our program is ready so this is the easiest way you can do to transition from a tough environment to tough J let's run and see now I can run this from command line or I can run it from here by the way it is possible when using Design Studio, you can run a program right away 
you do this run as gbc program what we need to do is to put the account list let's see the account list so this was produced in our previous video if you review this is how it looks like so we have 30 accounts from three companies eu1 bnk and sg1 they are 30 contrary to tafsi we only had 20 accounts now let's run our program and see how it's going to do the same so the name is the same tcct.list by the way i'm on windows so even if it's uh, in small letters should work all right as you can see we have the same output it runs and produces the same output this is a json we can check uh, we can have a new we do json we can format it all right as you can see we have the output a json produced from a tough environment so a recap what we did we took our jbc program they were there and the only thing we did on a subroutine we defined the component so which means there's we want only one jar to be produced and this is the name of the jar okay ebmtd training because this is the name of our component and we defined the subroutine before creating it so now let's look at the new syntax for that we are going to start gradually if you want to move to the next syntax it's not a must but you can do that let me teach you the new syntax as well i'm going to start with this subroutine getting rid of the call now the first thing I want to do to transition, I can start by getting rid of this call. So for that, I need to insert the package in which uh, this routine is defined. So to use packages, you use the keyword using. So you can do using. And the package where it is defined is eb dot training uh, so eb dot local so, so eb dot local so this subroutine is defined in this eb dot local and what i can do now is eb dot local and let's see look what i have everything which I have defined is eb dot local is is here and among them is this method mtd get record which accepts file name the id and the it returns record and id so basically everything which i have here I can grab this and put it here and i can get rid of this this is one thing I can do and if i run my program it's still run so this program run it so I do ACCT dot list look at it's still working okay now what I've done is ugly okay you agree with me I have insert and using two syntax in one so I should if I'm using the new syntax which is now using I don't have to use the old syntax I done so it's best practice don't mix the syntax so since I've decided to transition to the new syntax so I have I need to get rid of this old syntax which means I need to delete all this insert I only keep using now if I do this I don't have access to this variables okay and the, another improvement which i need to make let me define this as variables by the way this is going to be the name 
and this is going to be the currency. I just want to have this in the variables. And this is going to be working balance. Working balance. Or oh, let me just keep it a like balance. Okay. And these are variables since they are not uh, here. I need to initialize them. One thing which I can do, I need to use the package for where the account for the accounts. Okay. So basically, I replace insert. The insert for account with the package. So the package where the account is defined is ac dot account opening so basically I need to use this account opening now I can initialize my variables name team team I also have balance this is empty and, the, and I also have uh, currency also empty okay it's compiled now after calling this subroutine I can assign values because I'll get this record but um, there's another better way since I'm having this opening but let's face it, start with this one okay using our subroutines which we've created on our own so how do we get the name we're going to grab the name uh, from this record okay the same way we're doing because it's a dynamic array now the the definition how do we get the definition is in the same package ac.accounting account opening then we click a dot we see all the properties and methods the property need for the name is a short name so which means is should be in account dot uh, it's called short dot title Okay. Where do I get the currency? Let me do this. Currency is currency. The property called currency. Here it is. And also need the balance. Balance is the working balance. Working balance. All right. Now I have everything which I need. Let's run a program again. We can run our program. Still is going to work. ACCT dot list. So this is Windows. Okay. All right. We still get the same output. Now there's another improvement I can make. Uh, instead of using this subroutine which I wrote, which works perfectly, I can also capitalize on the package because in this package I have a method to read the account record. So I can get rid of this and I can say my rec is going to be this our package in this package we have account and we can read the data account so read or cache read and the record ID is going to be our account number It also returns an error. All right. So
So here I'm capitalizing on the packages. So I'm calling this method called read, which is going to return the record. I do run list. All right, see, it's still working. Now, the rest of the improvement which I would make since this kind of Java is just the naming, naming a conversion. So instead of using underscore, uh, the Java notation, it's better to keep to stick with uh, the conversion. The conversion in Java is to use the camel case. So it's not a must, okay? By the way, it's not a must. And let's see if you have any other underscores anywhere. None. And basically, I leave to you as an exercise, adapt this, so new syntax. If you want, uh, you can do that, or you can keep it. So a recap, we have seen uh, a very important topic of today, how we can transition from tough C to tough J. So we saw two syntaxes, okay? So one is the old syntax, pure info basic syntax. We saw that it still works in tough environment. The only thing we need to do is just to create your components and uh, you define the packages for your subroutine, because this is a must. And the other thing we have seen today is the new syntax of capitalizing on the packages. So as you can see, we can write minimum code. I don't have... So with this, we're concluding our discussion on development in TAFJ. In our next video, we're going to write the unit test for this subroutine. Stay tuned. See you next. Bye-bye.